Hi, I'm Eric Schumacher Rasmussen. I'm the editor in chief and VP of streaming media and the program chair for Streaming Media Connect. We're coming to the end of the panel and presentation section of our event this week. This is our seventh Streaming Media Connect. We're wrapping things up tomorrow with a workshop on the best streaming gear and how to use it. So I'm guessing that most of the people here are also going to want to join that tomorrow. And if you're not already signed up, please do. It's going to be a good one. But we're going to be back in person in May, May 24th and 25th in Boston for Streaming Media East. And you can log on to streamingmedia.com forward slash east and register already. We're going to have the program live tomorrow, so you can check out what we'll be offering. And we're also going to have the Content Delivery Summit and our Streaming Media University workshops on Monday, May 23rd. I'd like to welcome, as I said, Jeff Keithley, live producer extraordinaire, who is coming to us from his fancy studio in a trailer in Florida. Hey, Jeff. Hey there. Great to be here, actually. Glad we could make some time to get together. Yeah, I'm glad we could, too. You were, uh, you were on a panel yesterday about live production in the cloud, and Corey Banky moderated it, and Corey, Corey's name will be familiar to some of the people on this uh, who are watching now, I'm sure. And uh, he made a really good point that, you know, we've talked a lot about how things have changed since the pandemic began and uh, how the trend toward remote and distributed production has really, really taken off. And of course it has, but live producers like you and Corey have been working and moving towards remote and distributed production workflows for quite a long time, right? So what led you to where you are today? Well, it happened about nine years ago, actually. Uh, we've been doing this tennis contract for professional tennis with my company, Live Sports, for uh, about a, almost 10 years now. And uh, what happened was uh, we, we, we booked our local freelance talent like normal, and like most production companies were doing at the time. Well, they became sick. They became ill that they could not make it to the event. It was simple. You know, it's like, okay, where do we find somebody to, 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 to take them and, and take their spot and take, take over their responsibilities? Well, it, it was a unique, uh, it's chasing the scoring and stuff. It's not just throw anybody down and let them follow because you have to kind of know the game a little bit. Well, right. One just, of my, to, just to make clear, uh, the, the, uh, a large portion of what you do is, is tennis, right? You're covering I, live tennis. Yeah, we did 40 plus to when we were before, uh, turnarounding, uh, the hitting the, the, I guess it was March 13th, the magic day. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were doing over 45 tournaments a year, uh, hours and hours and hours of professional tennis yeah we, we're okay, the, so everywhere so in people North know the what what you're working with here anyway yeah, sorry to interrupt, but. So, we, so we have to do the score we had to keep up with the scoring and everything at the time and the graphics process very key on that to, because our our sources were going out to betting houses or gaming houses across the uh the world so we 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 looked around tried to find somebody local and we just didn't have the staffing in there to, to take just take other place so we did one day but I immediately called up one of my guys that was back at the office that was getting ready for another show. And so I'm like, hey, can you jump on Team Viewer and just watch this for an hour? And I'll give you video and audio over Skype so you can kind of see and hear what's going on and do the updates for the scoring so we can kind of catch your breath and stuff. And he was like, I, an hour? Uh, yeah, sure, no problem. So he jumped on and it was like three hours later. He's like, uh, do you still need me? I'm like, is it working? He goes, yeah. It's like, okay, we'll plan on this for the next three days. And oh, wow. that was, that was the start of it all. And it was like, it was a click. It's like, well, we could actually do distributed workflows from anywhere. And so we started moving deep into doing more and more graphics was easy. We started moving into doing uh, just monitoring of the sources and it, as an encoding engineer, while we were from our, our master controls or, or from people's homes even. Uh, but the next big step was about five years ago when we invested in Mark Roberts motion control cameras, uh, the camera heads that actually are robotic. And so we could, they're all IP based. And so we could record them. Uh, we could do recordings in, in all our shooting and everything from inside the truck, which is a thousand, 2000 feet away on fiber, but it's IP based. So immediately I was like, well, can't we just stretch that IP a little further? And right. that's that was the next step. And uh, it, we were controlling cameras remotely. And that was something that very few people have done until the pandemic hit. It was just everything that we were doing that we were slowly doing proof of concept in, in developing uh, and making it, making it our workflow. The next step really came around to just, uh, we had to, you know, we stepped into the pandemic and it was always, 
we moved things that were taking us five years to do we did in five days mm -hmm. <laughs> almost it felt like and so a lot of our our applications that we were already doing things uh remotely in the cloud or or just remotely in in just remote operations that was what propelled us really fast to move that away in the cloud and I love, I know in one of our previous discussions, you mentioned that, you know, there's there's all sorts of side benefits to that. For you covering so much tennis, you're getting your crew off of a 120, 130 degree court. Into, Absolutely. Yes, that was that was one of the first things. It's like, hey, right. guys, you do, you can work in the AC and the truck with the rest of the technical director and the, and the rest of the graphics and everybody else is there. But the big thing was they got off the court and they were like, you know, I, I'm not near as tired as I was. You know, I, an eight hour day, they could do a 10 hour day and not feel like they're or a 12 hour day and not feel like they're just completely burnt out from being out in the sun for for at 120 degrees. And then the next part that came after that is in and this is where the really the big investment in distributed workflow and remote work, workflows came in is the next step was allowing them to work from home or work from the office allowed them to have a better quality of life. And that was more important to me than saving a flight here and there or hotels or, ho or food or whatever. That was way more important because I've had staff that have stayed around after we made the switch where I was burning through like camera operators and things like that. After months, they were just, it was rough. I mean, it was, it's a, it's a tour. It's every week, every day for, for weeks and, and months at a time and it's moving crews in around it's, it's tough. It's a tough life. I uh, think bands moving all over the place and, and, and other uh, that's the kind of touring we're doing. Uh, so even though we had the as much as we could with tour buses and, and everything we could do to make it as as uh, as uh, easy on the, the crew, we we found that by giving them the opportunity to work from home or work from the office and be home with their family and be home, uh, you know, sleep in their own bed, it became a bigger thing. So that that's where that was where it's just clicked. It's like not about saving the money. It's mm -hmm. about making it better for the crew and, and, uh, and the employees. And, and, and I think everybody's kind of seen that now the work from home is not a fad. It's, it's a thing that's going to stay around for a while. For sure. For sure. And all of this led you to what we're going to focus on today, which is a new or relatively new platform as a service that you're bringing to market called master control cloud. So I'm yeah. going to let you talk about that and show it off. Oh, no problems at all. It, we're not going to do a lot of showing off today because okay. it really is a very, uh, a very, a customized system. But it, let's okay. let's look at it this way: is um, whenever we build systems out, we build workflows out. We try to to do that in everything as a, as a long time system integrator of over thirty years. We would always qualify with the client to find out exactly what are your needs, what what are your pain points, what can we do to help you, and it's the same thing we do when it comes into uh, our cloud infrastructures is some people just need a lot of replication. Say for instance, our, our Tony Robbins clients, uh, our uh, Eric Worre with the Worre Studios in Vegas, those guys, they just needed a lot of distribution. So they that was one place we, we just excelled in the cloud during the pandemic is because nobody else was doing it. We were setting up Zoom forums instead of 10, uh, 10 uh, Microsoft laptops or, or 10 uh, apples or whatever, or 100 apples, whatever, it, you couldn't find the gear, you couldn't get it together. Well, we replicated that that workflow in the cloud. So we may have 100 or 100, we actually wrote as many as 180 Zoom machines running in the cloud that were replicating out all this content that they were that we were sending up from their studios. And so that's where one place, it, you know, one direction we went. And then the next step, that the, the part that me as a, as a business owner and with live sports, we were always looking at how how much could we bring to the sh to the shoot, to the, the site and minimize the amount of big trucks. And so we went from a crew in our tour buses. We had a crew of six, seven, eight people that were traveling around down to a crew of three, two sometimes. And now we're on an average of two that could do the same job because everybody else that's on the crew, we might have a live in a live production. We might have on site two people, but we may only see also have five or six people that are off site that are working with the crew producing the event. So we went from these big vehicles to smaller vehicles. And then, and then the next step after that, it's like, okay, how small can we go that we could actually make this really efficient by bringing all the switching infrastructure and all the, the graphics and all the replay and everything like that, bring it up into the cloud because the cloud is where we can be even more flexible. So if we need to have 
three different events running, no problem. We just copy and paste and make three different uh, master control systems. Then the next step would be, it was like, okay, well, maybe we need to have 20 different events running. And that's where we started working with the other clients of, of building out and as a consultant, I was building out AWS infrastructure, Azure infrastructure, putting our NDI processing engines in, which is from Sienna. That's one of our big pieces of glue that kind of hold everything together. And then as we were building those out, they were coming back to us going like, okay, we've got that one set up, but we don't have the crew to, to help do more and we need some help. So we just started offering this platform that we're talking about now, which is the same tools that we've been using. So it might be a Viz Vector video switcher in the cloud. It might be uh, a new tech three play for instant replay, or it may be a couple of vMix machines or maybe 10 vMix machines. The same kind of things, the same tools that we're using, we're just duplicating and using the cloud, but my team is managing it and helping them run the show. And we could either be it as a hand off the keys, here's the keys and you know, here's the login information, go, to, go have fun, call me if there's a problem. Or mm -hmm. other times, as we've found as many of the times, they're like, well, how many VMIX operators do you know? It's like, uh, about 50. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> how many do you need? Uh, you know, how many, and the thing with the Viz Vector uh, Plus is it's a TriCaster in the cloud. So there's a lot of TriCaster users out there. It's very simple for them once they get in their mindset that they're just controlling a virtual machine away from them. It's somebody else's machine. They don't have to put in, they don't have to be sitting in front of it. Once they get through that mindset, then it's the same workflow. It's no different. It's just NDI sources in, NDI sources out, uh, audio in and out, much uh, different ways. Uh, it's just a little slight tweaks in there, but that's where it really kind of moved into our platform of, of being able to give people that that backing of, well, you need more? Oh, sure, no problem. Let's turn up some more. Okay. So, uh, you know, I think there's still surprisingly, and, you know, coming from a streaming background, uh, and coming from a cloud background, not coming from a cloud background, but, you know, we've been talking about the cloud for years. Um, it always surprises me when I go to someplace like NAB or IBC and, uh, you know, I'm reminded that there's still some resistance to the cloud, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there what really do you is. Think the biggest, what are the biggest concerns people have with moving their workflows to the cloud? And how do you overcome those concerns when you're talking to them? The, the biggest obstacle without a doubt is just the lack of understanding. They, they, there are people that dive in really quick because they see that the small numbers that Amazon puts out there of like, oh, you can rent this virtual machine for $2 an hour. But you, you don't know, just turn on a machine for an hour broadcast. You need, you need to actually have it up and do prep and, and, you know, and actually have to do some, some more work after the event for post editing and things like that. So it's more than that, but it's also bandwidth costs. It's infrastructure costs. Uh, but most people, when they start thinking about cloud, they, they're like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's something that's, that's, it's harder than it really is. It, it, it is I mean, it is hard. I'm not going to, I'm never going to belittle the fact that it's not, it's not a simple thing, but it, it is one of those things that once you find people that are like us that are really, um, I guess you'd say fluent in it, it becomes easier and easier for the inferred. And that's our goal with the master control cloud is it's master control cloud. And that, and that is going to be the way to get people into cloud production to make it easy. And that's what we're, we're trying to do. And so that way they can get the same tools that they're used to using. In, in, a, in an on-prem type of environment, they could get that in the cloud and they could either be have us manage it for them or we could handle the keys and they could go to town, whichever way. Right. And it's funny because, you know, someone uh, just asked in the in the chat for a link to your website and I, I provided it for them. But, you know, this really isn't uh, like you said, this really isn't something you can show on a website. This really isn't something you can you know, someone needs to have a conversation with you or someone else on your team and, and talk about it, what their specific needs are. And yeah, because a lot of people, and granted, we're coming from the sports background. So when we when we develop master control, it, it really is about more than just a switcher. So it's not just vMix in the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's Viz Vector tied in with, like I said, the, the Sienna NDI processing engine. It's tied in with replay if we need replay. It's tied in with graphics. We've got Conrad working in the cloud. We've got uh, we've got uh, Ross Expression working in the cloud. We've got uh, let's see. Uh, of course, VizRT, we've got VizRT in the cloud with the trio. And then uh, the last uh, little piece of smaller software that 
the last two are the live blue effects, which uh, some people are familiar with, and uh, character works. So we've got five different graphics packages, depending on what you need. That is what we're trying to do. So that we're trying to, to, to tailor it to what they're familiar with and then also give them the exact tools they would have in a production truck. Sure, sure. And uh, I would guess then that, uh, you know, this sort of goes without saying, but, um, I, you know, I, I, would, I would assume you've seen demand for what you're offering just skyrocket over the last couple of years. It definitely has. And, and at first it was like we were using this all internally and ha we've been doing the same platform for four or five years now. Okay. And it, it really was one of those things where we started off with, you know, I didn't really think about it as a product, as something that other people would be into, but it really was the um, the pandemic that really kind of turned that around. It's like, well, people are asking for this and they need it. I, I, I looked at it as just a way of improving our efficiency. And, and as we became more and more efficient and, and better in, it, in using it, it helped us. And, and now I see it as an advantage that we can help other people too. Right, right. So <clears throat> what is the best way for people to get in touch with you? Maybe at some point, you know, before we sign off, pop your email sure. or who you want them to contact in the chat. Oh, sure um, thing. Because, yeah, because I know it's real simple. For now, it's just Jeff at live-sports.tv. All right. And that's Jeff with one F. That, that, um, that's true. Yes. Right. I only have one F. Uh, right, I, exactly. You, and, you know, I love hearing you talk about the fact, and this came up in an earlier panel this week about automating OTT workflows. So a different kind of automation, but, you know, it's not necessarily about the robots taking over. No. It's about the robots and the automation and the cloud allowing people to work smarter. And, and, and as you said, I mean, as, as, as a business owner, they're, they're able to live better lives. Uh, well, especially, provide, go ahead. Well, especially right now with the shortage of equipment everywhere, mm -hmm. this is where the cloud is going to, it's going to be here and it's going to stay here for a while with the shortage of equipment everywhere. I, have you ever looked, have you looked lately for a Dante audio mixer? I, mean, I haven't personally, but I'm. <laughs> you're not going to find one for a, six months to a year. Mm -hmm. Everybody says, oh, they're coming in next month, but that was next month, seven months ago. Right. So it, it's really going to be, it's a major, sh the chip shortage is a real thing. And it's hit our industry hard, especially the audio side. It is, it, it's also hitting the video side too. There, there's going to be longer and longer, the shortage of equipment. With the cloud and software-based solutions, we can spin up a control room, a master control room in a matter of a day and be mm -hmm. show ready the next day. And so that is the one thing, when could you buy one, buy equipment and two, spin it up and wire it in a day? You can't do it. Right. It's just physically impossible right now. And so that's a big part of what we're doing is, is bringing that flexibility to people so they can just bring it up. And, mm -hmm. and they're not gonna change, the supply chains are not gonna ease up anytime soon. No, so I think this is where we're going to be for, for a while. And it's not for everybody. I, I, and I, and I will be a very honest with that. It is not for everybody, but uh, it is definitely a solution that uh, people should definitely look into. Um, we have some clients that are, they're doing their own private cloud. So it's still virtually, it's a virtual machine farm that's mm -hmm. in their own uh, server rack. That's in a co-location uh, in a actual server sitting in a data center. That's effectively what you're doing with Amazon or Azure or GCP anyway. You're just using a slice of their power. These right. are your machines. And so we set them up with their own co-location solution and everything. And, and they have backups. And of course, they have the virtual machines that were built in it, built in for them. But that is another way to leverage the power of flexibility. But you've got to remember with flexibility, the more flexibility you add to it, the more complexity you mm -hmm. add to it also. And that is a big thing that most people are, are I, you're asking, what are they afraid of? That's, that's probably a big part of it because it feels really complex, but you're just, you're not building, you're not building a bunch of wires anymore. It's virtual wires. It's, it's, it's right. connection points and things like that. So if you, if you're scared of a rack that has like, I'm sitting by in front of right now, a scared of a rack with, a, you know, 5,000 cables that are uh, going everywhere, then the cloud's great because you don't ever see those cables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's simple. Right. And I love the fact that, you know, supply chain issues aside, even if your business is right across the street from a B&H, you're still not going to be able to set up hardware on-prem or remotely as quickly as you can set up a, the cloud. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're talking about. 
in, in with having templates and, and building out things that are that are common as we have done we can really actually just fine tune it down to if you have something that's exactly the same thing week after week say you do a weekly show spin it up in the morning and then turn it off in the evening your cost for operating that is a fraction of having to build a studio to do a weekly broadcast yeah that is a fraction for sure absolutely well, all right. Well, thanks so much for the insight, the overview, and the information. I did pop your email into the chat. I also popped a link to an article that Jeff wrote, and I'll pop it in again. I lost it. But uh, if you scroll up in the chat, um, you can probably find it quicker than I can to an article that Jeff wrote about moving live production to the cloud. So thanks so much for taking the time, Jeff. Jeff at live, live-sports.tv. And uh, I'll let you get back to the tennis courts. Thanks, guys. I enjoyed right, it. Thanks. Looking forward to talking to somebody. Yeah, you bet. And uh, that wraps up today, uh, the our fourth day of panels for Streaming Media Connect. Back tomorrow with the workshop, the best streaming gear and how to use it. Thanks again to Bird Dog and Harmonic for sponsoring. The winner of our Amazon gift card for this panel is Jack Travisano. Congrats and look out for an email from us. And we'll see you folks who are interested in streaming toys and gear tomorrow. So long.